This series of tapes, Inflammation vs. Misformation, were recorded from classes given this year by Dr. Malachi de York, known to us as the Supreme Grandmaster Naya Malachi Zodok El, our own Pharaoh, Amanubi Ruakatar. And now, listen with an open mind and heart as our Grandmaster inflames you with only the truth. Allow your inner light to flow again and stomp out misformation with only the facts. And now, listen to the Supreme Grandmaster, Naya Malachi Zodok El. and then remove them whenever they feel like it. But as indigenous people, when you start uh, for, when you start proclaiming right, your indigenous rights to the land, and you can prove it with documents and deeds. Like you said, you got a reflection in your mind of your grandfather, and he was definitely standing there a Native American. But for years, you'll be taught to direct your attention towards being African or Asiatic or Arab and a whole bunch of other things. And that's done intentionally. And that, I mean, that's a safeguard on the part of the people right now that have, that have the country under control. Because once you start uh, realizing your true identity and you start making uh, connection with foreign governments, and like we say, uh, indigenous people of Geneva, and you start putting your indigenous rights before the public, worldwide, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing they can do about the information we're putting out, we're verified. I mean, they're trying to say to all match uh, Orientals and Ray Charles can see that the all match are not Orientals. I mean, they need that, but uh, it's not going to work. The time has come. We're raising it. That's just too bad. But uh, you have to get this African thing out your mind. That's not real. You follow? Yes, dear. Okay, so then uh, when I have a son that's in college now. So then if I am aware of all that and I knew everything behind it, then he could have applied for a scholarship for uh, Native Americans? Yes, he could, but he, but we shouldn't do that, right? We should we should provide our, according to um, indigenous people's rights, we can act in the past. We're supposed to provide our own edu education. We're not supposed to be going to him to get educated. We're supposed to have our own education in our own language. To follow, and if we were uh, what you call enslaved, as they say, that led us to need these uh, documents and certificates that they issue in order to get jobs. To follow, then that's a handicap. Because we as a people need to go back to the land so we don't have to feel we have to go into industry or in, into, the, into their government for support. We have to learn to support ourselves. We have to learn to build for ourselves. And so I'm not saying that your son's degrees are worthless because I have degrees also. I'm saying, but as Native Americans, if we're going to make that right, if we're going to hold up that constitution and go and say, listen, listen, according to what, you, what you've written or copied, you don't play fair. You follow? If, I take a, if we take some statistics today and just look at the world, or let's say the Western world, the Caribbeans, 
the Puerto, Puerto Rico, Cuba, a place that we just look at where we are as a people and see how we're being treated and find out if we're being treated fair. And the law says if you're not being treated fair, you have the right to go and make a private election and elect your own leadership and set up your own government. You're allowed to, for what they call peaceful assembly. They can't stop, they can't stop us from coming together like this and starting to organize for ourselves because I don't feel safe with the incident that took place in New York a couple of days ago, which is, like the brother said, which is not an isolated incident, the, the famous terminology that they use. I said, this is, this is getting pathetic. Rodney King is pathetic. The young brother who got strangled to death by accident in Chicago, you know what I mean, it's pathetic. And the young brother who got shot in front of the motorcycle store a couple of, uh, uh, last year in Atlanta, one of the twins, you follow? I am no longer safe in your hands. You have years and years of jealousy and envy of me that you created, and now you abuse me. You follow? And you take my name, your Massey, my natural instinct towards being gentle as a weakness because I don't retaliate. So my first approach is to give you back your stuff. You follow that? and set up my own stuff. I have a right to move around this land wherever I want, that's law. I have a right to set up on this land wherever I want. No one can hinder you from moving and traveling. You have a right to a nationality, that's law. These are things that's in the Constitution book so you learn them. You have a right to stand up and say that you are an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> and it's law, if you, if, you, if you claim that as your nationality. You follow that? However, we do have a nationality that they did such a good deal of lying and burying that it makes it very difficult when we go to the library to find the facts. They buried it so well. And now it's time to bring it forward because we tried to cooperate with you. We tried to work with you. We went, many of us did go through the system, did graduate from college, do have degrees, and still couldn't get a job. Many of us got arrested and we didn't get fair treatment. Just us, like he said, meant just that, just us, them. We, it's not like we, all of us as a race, decided to rebel. To this very day, 75% of the black population, as they call us, are still trying to cooperate. Literally still bending over, kissing butt. And the 25% of us that are trying to fed up are made to look like we're some type of troublemakers. Because I'm not sending my daughters and son to public school so they can get shot in an environment that you can't control. And your best resource is, well, give us more tax money, an institution that does not really or legally exist. You volunteer your tax, and now they enslave you with them. And then I pay the tax, and the brother who, from Haiti who got beat up and sodomized was probably paying tax also. So he paid them to do that to him. Why? Because we have nothing to do with the psychological evaluation of those people that are in office. They get in office by them voting each other in. Then we find out when they get in office of all the things they did. We found out once Nixon was in office that he was a crook. When are we going to start getting a psychological profile so we can analyze the people that's going to represent us? Not because he gets up and gives a good speech. The bottle of yeah, a, a strong financial campaign, but when do I get a chance to find out whether the guy in charge, let's say the chief of police, when do I get a chance to investigate him? Find out who his sons and daughters are, what they do, where they go to school, are they criminals? We only find out way after. After they what? Done damage to us. And then when we finally say, listen, I don't have anything against my country, stop saying go back to Africa. Go back to Africa, go back to Europe. Go back to Africa. I ain't got nothing, this is my country, I ain't got nothing against I got something against the people that are misusing the country and misusing me. I should not have to fear if a police officer pulls up behind me while I'm on the road, if I say, well, my safety belt is on, I was doing 55 miles an hour, I know my, maybe my headlight on. You know what I mean? I can just about minimize why I'm being pulled over. But if I'm sitting there and I'm starting to get an adrenaline rush because I don't know what to expect because I get flashbacks of Rodney King, is the man that's coming with this time in the uniform, is this a devil pretending he's a human and he wants to kill me? Is there an underlying society that has a quota that says we must 
have a Rodney incident every certain amount of months to keep fear instilled. But I can't believe, I know you can't either, that the officers in New York could ever imagine that they were going to get away with that. Not if, they, not, if they, not if they kidnapped him or accosted him or taken him from a party. If they took this individual out of a party, then people were there. That's the party generally means. And then they do what they've done to him and nobody's supposed to see it? No. Uh-uh. They knew that was going to make public. They knew that was going to make media. It is supposed to make media. It's supposed to instill fear of the uniform. It's supposed to make me and you afraid of them. So they can walk up and do anything between that and their indoctrination of Christianity or turn the other cheek. As long as I get out of the situation, I forget the abuse. You understand? Now they're talking about how much money this boy should get. Money. I tell you, six months from now, there'll be another incident. And they're going to start getting closer and closer because it's a, t it's a fair tactic. There is an organization. And that cop out there with um, OJ, Furman, belonged to that organization. And it's an international connection that they have. And our officers, the Nubian officers, don't even have a clue of it. Because they are being abused in the police department. They don't get an equal, they don't get equal rank. The same thing in the military. Nuwapi is in the military, don't get equal rank. In the Board of Education, you don't get equal rank. You follow? So they don't probably petition for no ill, petition for equal rights. For what? It's not like I'm going to get it. So in view of the fact that I'm not allowed to express myself intellectually, agriculturally, vocationally, after whatever you say, it's time for me to pull aside and show you what's inside my mind. Because if I look to see what's inside your mind, then I'll go downtown Atlanta and I'll look at your architects and the structures they built and I'll see demagogues and demons looking off the buildings at me. If I go to New York down on Wall Street or Philadelphia, I see demons and demagogues and things bearing down off of cathedrals even, churches even got them. You're telling me right there what is inside your, your soul. The artist is the expression of the people. You with me? Yeah. What the artist paints tells you what the people feel inside. You hear me? But now when I get a free hand, meaning us, we got a free hand to build out here. Look what we did. Any demons and demagogues looking down off the building? No, just us. You know what they'll do? They'll drive by here. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm talking about my Christian brothers and sisters. They'll drive by here. <laughs> and they'll look up and they'll say, those people are pagans. I see statues of Egyptian images and Exodus says, do not make graven images and likeness and you know what I mean? They get people saying, they have some kind of a paganistic, ritualistic cult thing out there, uh, maybe. <laughs> you follow? And I turn around and say, well, excuse me, sir, but when I go to Washington, D.C., I see Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair like Ramesses III, a big old monument that you tell everybody to go see, and all the Christians don't realize that that's idol worship. I say, well, you flip a dollar bill out your pocket and start looking at all of the pictures of them dead presidents, aren't those graven images? And if man was made in the image and after the likeness of God, then any man's image you duplicate is in violation of do not make any graven images. So now, I want anybody here from any city that they construct to tell me a city you live in where there is no monument. They even got a rabbit down here in town. <laughs> All the Christians should be saying, this rabbit has got to go. Because it's a violation. You with me? It's a violation of the holy book of the Bible, of Exodus, where God says that he is a jealous God. And that you should have, not picture that, by the way, and that you should have no other gods before me. In the heavens above, on the earth, or beneath the earth. He went all the way. God took it all the way. Don't want nothing flying, walking, or swimming. <laughs> Looking like me. 
You understand? They come out here and see me on the wall and then see me looking at me and I didn't carve an image of me and in the likeness of me I say I'm God and they get mad. You follow? They call me a pagan. Them people out there pagans. Look at Isis standing there. There's more to Isis than that statue. She's also body beautiful. Your father is something to go into the girls' minds. The image of a goddess standing there that looks like her. All these little kids here. If that bothers you, then give us one Negro for every white person on the dollar bill. And let's go around each city and every place you got statues of uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, and over there in Stone Mountain, honey. <laughs> You got a whole wall of killers up there. A whole bunch of mass people who are massacring human beings, and you make it a monument, and the Christian world cannot see that there are people from the Confederates that worship those men. They have parades for them and holidays for them, and they dress up like them. They put on old gray suits and ride down the streets in horses. You know what that is? That's idol worship. Whether it's idol or idol, it's still a violation of your scripture. And you're going to drive by here and say, we're pagan? Because I want to look in a mirror and see me? Because you want me to look in a mirror and see you? They got women standing in the mirror with nappy hair doing it there? <laughs> Trying to throw it back over their ear? Bleaching it, blowing it, burning it, straightening it, flying it, electrifying it, microwaving it, <laughs> stretching it, weaving it, <laughs> teasing it. What else? Touch ups, touch down. They go up, they go down. <laughs> they want me and you to look in a mirror, but don't see us to see them. And to see them as beautiful. They want me and you, and I'm talking about the religious sector. They want me and you to see God in their image and after their likeness and subliminally not realize that I'm seeing myself with that as the devil. Give all that as long as I continue to follow this guy. This is the devil. The Bible. It's called the devil of Babel. You know what I'm saying? They want that. They need that. But when this day and time comes, and it comes, 25,000 years, believe it or not, is not a long time that people have existed over 76 million years. Anybody who's only existed for, only existed for 6,000 years, 25,000 years seems like a long time to them. We've been around a long time. We done evoluted in every different direction and came back to what we look like. He's still moving in one direction, dying out daily. <laughs> but he must maintain a certain amount of control. And he does it through religion. And where he misses religion, he does it through the cinema or the movies. Where he misses that, he does it through the radio. And where he does that, he does it through the education department. And he teaches your children to hate you. Not to hate you by hate, but hate the way you look and hate the way they look, but hate you for breeding them that way. It's all subliminal. And then your child raises up and rebels against their mother and father. Don't want to be with their fathers. They all got Jacob and son, William and son, so and so and son. You don't have no niggas and son. Every son wants to break away from what his father's doing and go off and do his own thing. You follow? So we're in a day and time where we got to collect our thoughts and start to do our own thing. Or as I simply say, put together our own stuff. In the, in the Muslim world, they admitted that we were coming. But the Muslims don't even see it. Right in their Quran, they admit that somebody's coming, and Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as they say, sending peace and blessings upon him. They say that Muhammad was a salvation to humanity. You hear me? The savior to the world, the answer to the problem. And the last revelation of their Quran, and yet Muslims in there. Thank you. Then you know what I'm talking about. And the last revelation of their Quran says, إِذَا جَنَّصُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدَخُلُونَ فِي دِينَ اللَّهِ أَفْوَجًا فَسَبَّحْ بِحَمْدِهِ رَبِكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ كَنَا تَوَابًا You know what that means? Either when 
Jah comes, lost Allah, the help of Allah. When fact, that shall be the victorious opening. Now, if Muhammad was standing there with them, with me, and he was supposed to be the salvation to all humanity, why would his followers say, Muhammad, 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 when is the Nasr coming? He's standing there. In the Holy Quran, second chapter, 214, it says, Muhammad, when is the help coming? He says, in the Nasr Allah, surely the help is near. He says it. That means he ain't it. You hear me? Christianity, book of St. John. There are many things I have to say unto you, however you can't bear them. Yet, I will send unto you a another comforter. He shall not speak of himself, but only that which he hears shall he speak. And he shall glorify my holy name. That's not Jesus is talking, according to y'all. So now who's coming? A holy ghost. The Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say that. He said another comforter. Someone like himself. Another company. He was standing there as a physical being. No, I'm not staging to say it's me for all you people waiting for the trap. That's not what I'm doing, so relax. I'm basically saying that he was admitting that he is not the Savior. So the Christians had to rewrite the story and say he's coming back. Right? And they've been waiting for 2,000 years for him to get back. But Jesus himself never makes that claim. Jesus himself was one who had to repent. You say, what? Yes, Jesus, God, had to repent. Just like Muhammad admits in the Quran that he sinned and had to repent. Write in your book of the Bible in Mark. You got a Bible? Chapter 1. Let's see what it says here in Mark, chapter 1. John did baptize, verse 4, in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. This is said in verse 4, after it speaks about John the Baptist baptizing Jesus in the Jordan River. Now, what was the purpose for the baptism? According to the Bible, I don't even know what your reverend or your teacher or your pastor would like to make you believe because you don't want to stay by the word. Let's look at the word that you said you believe in and let's see what it says. It says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Right? As it is written in as it is written in the prophets. They're talking about the book as it was recorded. Okay? Behold, I send my messenger before the face which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make your path straight. End of verse 3. Boom. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of the repentance for the remission of sin. They call it Bet and Oya in Greek. Bet and Oya. You know what it means? To change your mind. The word they have for repentance in the Greek Bible is not repentance, but to change your mind. Tell the reverend to look it up. To find out it's true. If I proceed down this chapter, you know what's going to come down to nine? And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. Why was Jesus baptized? For repentance, to have his mind changed according to the Greek. Why would God have to be baptized? Why would a person who was born sinless, conceived in heaven first, and then laid in earth in a manger, why would he have to repent if he was God? Repentance didn't start there, you know. It started back here in Genesis, way back here. Oh, yeah, you ain't going to like that one. <laughs> Let's see what it says. Oh, it gets some yellow. Maybe help. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Listen. And God, and here, they, and here they use the word Elohim. They don't use the word Yahweh. They use the word Elohim, a plural. Even though they'll lie and say God with a big old capital G and then start talking about capital and small g's, which don't exist in Hebrew or in Greek. Big lie. And God saw the wickedness of man. Every imagination of his thoughts 
of his heart was only evil continuously. This is what God saw. You hear me? This is Genesis chapter 6, right after the creation. Man, this all God saw in, in man. It is every image in his imagination, everything about him was evil continuously. And, listen to this, and it repented, Nahem, the Hebrew word. The same thing, to change your mind, to repent. And it repented the Lord, and here they used Yahweh, they stepped away from God. One of them stepped out and got mad. The one responsible for the creation. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. Here, God is repenting. So God was baptized. God, you're telling me, the all-knowing, all-wise, omnipresent, omnipotent being who knows the secrets of every man's heart according to Psalms, didn't know that Adam was going to become a bad boy. You understand that? And I'd like to ask another question. Did the horses sing in the garden? Yes or no? I may sound crazy. I just I advise you need to answer. Did the horses sing? Did the goats sing? Did the chickens sing? So why were they drowned? Why were all of the beast of the field. Let me go on and see what it says. And the Lord, this is Yahweh, said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Check this out. You ready? Both man and beast. What does the word both mean? Two. Two. Both means two. Both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls. Is God having a mathematical problem here? <laughs> he said both, and then he went on to name four things. That's like, that's like, I want all five of y'all to get up. <laughs> and put up two fingers. You read that? Listen to this, this is your Bible. I'm saying your Bible, because I'll get to the end of that. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. I would like to know who he's talking to, if he's alone. You're following? You had to turn to somebody. He didn't say, I'm going to destroy you, so he wasn't talking to man. He wasn't talking to angels, because you'll find, I'll get to that later. <laughs> Whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping thing and fowl of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. I am sorry I made them. Who is he talking to? Don't run back to the New Testament and give me the hype of rapture and a bunch of crap. Let's start in the beginning of the Bible and try to do word by word to see if we're getting a clear vision of the principles and nature of what God is about and who God is. What kind of nature is this? This same God in Genesis chapter 4 speaks with Cain. Cain killed Abel. Correct? Now, before Cain killed Abel, how many people, according to the Bible and the Quran, how many people, human beings, were on the planet Earth? Tell me. Four folks. Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. Nobody else was young. Nobody. You with that? According to the Bible. However, after Cain kills Abel, Cain tells God that he's afraid that whoever catches him is going to kill him. And God tells him, anyone that kills you or touches you, I'll put a sevenfold curse on them. Who is Cain and God talking about if the only people left on the planet is Adam, Eve, and Cain? Nobody else was there. So who was the Cain afraid to go out and meet? No one else was on the planet. You could say, well, this was a prediction of the future. <laughs> no. Genesis chapter 3 says the man has become like one of us to know good from evil. Who is the one of us? Well, that's God and his divine principles. <laughs> Talking in the plural, he means himself. <laughs> <laughs> it may 
sound like a joke, but it's not funny what they have done to our souls and our minds with this crap. And then when I when I stood beside Dr. Martin Luther King, right, and held it up, I'm talking to you Christians, and held it up down here in Selma, Alabama, in front of him and said, but we are Christians, they slapped the Bible out of his hand and said, your God ain't my God. Right? The KKK bases their whole doctrine on the book of Romans. If you study them. And then go out and burn you. And crucify you and castrate you. What do they put on your what do they put on your lawn? A pitchfork or a cross? The people that came over here, Christopher, hello, Christopher, hello, Christian. Christopher Columbus were Christians who came over here when you were here as Native Americans living in peace. We were doing fine for as they have on record 10,000 B.C.E. Before the Christian era, we were living here on this land in peace. Was no blood sacrifices. Was no wars amongst us. Then the Christians came over here with their doctrine. You hear me? We were living in Morocco. We were living in Mauritania. We were living in Mali. We were living in Senegal. And all of the southern Sahara in peace. You hear me? And then the Muslims or Muslims invaded with Islam. Their religion. And we've been fighting each other. We have actually been convinced to kidnap each other and sell each other in slavery, as they call it, for money. You with me? And they hold up this book, the Bible, or they hold up the Quran to enslave your mind with some type of faith. You follow that? Blind faith. And the bad thing about it is someone like me who does his homework, masters the languages of these books, and start to analyze them and say, well, I just want to talk to you about that book. I want to see if, brethren, you really know what you're talking about. Because you can get up there and storm it, and talk to the hummer, and talk to Holy Ghost bull crap. But do you know what you're talking about when it comes down to our souls? And what has this book done for me lately? Nothing. I'm still being abused. And I'm a man. I can stand up and I can retaliate. But I'm intelligent enough to try to work for law and order. And in that kindness and gentleness, I'm portrayed as weak. You follow? You had Reverend Shopton have Millions, look like millions of people marching across the bridge in New York, right? So they walk from this end of the bridge to that end of the bridge, and then they disperse and go home. But that boy still lays in the hospital on critical. Nothing is done. That's called a peaceful display. But what happened to him is not a peaceful display. And I'm not supposed to get mad. And if I talk about it, I'm a rebel rouser or a troublemaker because I fear that my son may be subject to that kind of abuse. Do you hear me? And, I can, and you can be convinced, oh, that guy out there is a bad man. That nigga out there is trouble. They can convince you that I'm trouble because all I say to the reverend, I talk to any one of your reverend's preachers, rabbis, or imams. They've been running for me for 25 years. They've been ducking and hiding and bobbing and all of them got my books. You look in your reverend's briefcase and in there you're going to see me looking up. <laughs> all the Freemasons and Shriners are reading our books. Eastern Stars, Daughters of Isis too. Minister Farrakhan, open his briefcase. I'm looking up at him. Yahweh bin Yahweh, Black Madonna, Rastafarian, everybody is reading our book. But none of them can see that this is their time, that incarnation time. 
time to set the record straight. The kind of information that we are putting out is causing a traffic jam on the information highway. They can't even keep up with where we're coming from. And they're not supposed to because it's your wake-up call. You can make up your mind to delve into these books like the young man said, and I give you the opportunity, I said, don't believe me. Yeah. Check me out. Say, I'm checking the nigga out. Nigga could be lying. Niggas lie. He lie well. <laughs> but I'm saying it before, you have to do it and get this religious, oh, I don't want to check you out because I believe in you. Nah, that's the game they used before. The reverend gets you so confident in him that when he opens up the Bible and makes a statement, you follow him? You just believe in no, wait, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 let me get this straight now. Mary had a little lamb <laughs> whose fleece was white as snow. Is that correct? Is that what you're telling me about Jesus and Mary? And uh, this little lamb was born because God wanted to come down to earth. So he came to a woman and he placed himself inside this woman. And then he gave birth to himself in a manger and he called three wise men who didn't believe in his religion. And he also stirred the anger in Herod to want to kill him. And the wise men went to Herod. And then the wise men had to come back to Joseph and tell Joseph, watch out, because Herod wants to kill your son. And then God sent angels, listen, God sent angels to tell Joseph and Mary to take the little boy and go into Egypt. Correct? Is that, the, is that the story? I thought the little boy was God. Now, if the little boy is God laying in the manger, then a the little boy should lean up like the Muslims say, talk from the cradle, which is crap. They made that up. But anyway, he should be able to lean up and say, Joe, let's get out of here. I mean, after all, this is God. Does he have, does he have a restriction? Can the baby God not get up or sit up, stretch, say, Joe, Mary, Herod's mad. He's intimidated by the fact that I maybe take his throne. Let's go hang out in Egypt for a while, you know. Couldn't he do that? Isn't he God? God is running from Herod. God is afraid to die. God was born to die on the cross for your sins, according to the scripture, and was supposed to die at age 33 on Mount Calvary so that I could be saved. This was predestined. Recorded in heaven before it happened on earth. If Jesus was going to die at 33, why was he running at birth? Could anybody have interfered with that if that was destiny? Could Herod have killed Jesus? Could the Nazarites have killed him when he ran through the crowd? Could the Jews have killed him when he was hiding? Somebody or Bates have been lying to you. And that's why we can't get out this state of mind. Because we are blinded by some type of hypnotic spell of stupidity. They got us numb into believing stuff that does not make sense. Some of y'all cried when you saw the movie E.T. Because, because a little rubber monster wanted to go home. Tell me about it. They was able to jump off the screen and touch your heart emotional because of a little freaky looking mother with a finger in the air called E.T. And all the people in town went and saw E.T. And then they're mad at me because I said, I'm a real one. I'm not a little green thing. <laughs> oh, he crazy. But your sons and daughters were crying for a little monster whose head went up and down and spun around. <laughs> You understand? Some of y'all are probably too young, but y'all people about my age. Remember the movie Psycho? You was afraid to close the shower curtain after watching that movie. I'm a liar. The birds, people put their birds, the parakeets got infected. You got to go. You see a bunch of birds, you be thinking, where would I hide? They showed them flying through windows and tearing down doors. I've watched many a birds flop off a window. They can't do it, but they know that they can control the way we think and feel. So they can control the way you think and feel about me. 
and I about you. You and me. They can actually alter our emotions and make us do things to each other. But when it comes to them, they can do anything to us and we don't do anything but march across the bridge. Shopkin was going to get something to eat in Chinatown. <laughs> he always marches where the people cook a lot of food. He marched in the little Italy where the Italians was to go to the pizza store. Now he's marching across the bridge to Chinatown to get some chop suey. But what about the brother who's now on a critical diet? What about that fact? You with me? How long are we to absorb, or will you continue to absorb the crap? Halla Selassie was not Jesus. He was a nice little Ethiopian boy who sold his soul to the Queen of England. Now, if you don't know your own history, if you ain't been to Egypt, you got niggas walking around, ain't never been to Ethiopia. Now, Aksum, or Ethiopia, or they create all kind of names, Ethiopia, I. <laughs> now, Yahweh Ben Yahweh don't have any flying saucers. Nigga been in jail seven years, the flying saucers ain't get here yet. You with me? How long are we going to be believing in this stuff? Jesus is not coming. Hello? Wake up. A short time is not 2,000 years. He said, you see me now in St. John's, in a little while you see me again. Right? A little while is not 2,000 years. A little while is, how long will it be before my tea is ready? In a little while, honey. Okay. That's a little while. A 2,000-year-old cup of tea? Wake up. It's a fake promise. And the problem is not in the congregation. It's in the preacher who wants to keep that Cadillac full. He ain't no longer concerned whether or not this is the word of God or not. He's worried about that ching a ling a ling a ling And Jesus in this Bible here, according to you people, when he found people exchanging money in his father's house, what did he do? He went in and turned over the table and said, this is my father's house, take this crap out. So how does a reverend stand up and pass out a cup in the house of God? And you want to know why churches are burning down? You want to know why all across Georgia, Christian churches, predominantly black, are burning? Because they're doing mischief in the house of the Lord. And they're doing mischief in the name of the Lord. And Father, they're doing the works of what they themselves call the devil. It's the Christian preachers who say, those people out there are crazy. Before they even come out here and shake my hand to welcome me into Georgia, let me see if the man's crazy. Let me sit down and break bread with him. Ain't that the Christian way? Let me talk to the man and find out how crazy he is. I'm not the type of person who would take them apart on a first date. Y'all know I'm not that kind of guy. I'd be nice to the man on the first date. But by the second date, I'm going to tell you a new one if you don't come right. Because you ain't going to teach this crap no more. Because it is not doing nothing for us. So now let's see what this does for us. Tell me, how do you feel? How do you feel inside knowing again? Isn't that a good feeling? Well, first it comes up and says, well, you know, you have to understand this Bible because it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you as a Nuwapian say, you mean Elohim, don't you? And they go, no, I mean God. It says God. <laughs> he said, but you mean Elohim because you're admitting that this Bible was originally Hebrew, right? You go, well, the Bible was Hebrew, that's right. So how do you say God in Hebrew? Jehovah. <laughs> say, no, not Jehovah. It's all over. Close the book up. Take back the crap. Does anybody have the book of Leviathan with them? Page 664 and 665. Anybody have it? When you get to that page there, you're going to find that it says, they must get rid of Princess Di. They must get rid of Princess Di. Because she, with her children and her, would naturally become the prince. And the, the princess and the princess, and they got to stop that. 
Now, when I listened to the news last night, I heard them say Princess Di was in a plane crash and she had minor lacerations of the head and one of her limbs were broken. They couldn't tell you what limb was broken while they were looking at her. 665 on part two. It says, they got rid of the two rulers. They got rid of Margaret Thatcher, a woman British prime minister from 1979 to November 22nd, 1990. And they replaced her with a male named John Majors. Now, listen close. Now they have to get rid of Princess Diana. Because, by rights, she married, she's married to the prince, and she's the next princess to become the heir of the throne. The mystery Howard. They have to eliminate her. That's revelation. How long, how, how long ago was this book done? If you're looking for the other person, the other great person to die, he's sitting right here. Dang his name is. He was the head of China, the prolonged communist. He also died this year. If y'all remember me telling y'all, we have two great people that must die this year. One male and one female. I said, I thought it was Mother Teresa, but it wasn't fair because she was so old. But I said, I didn't see it clear enough, but the prophecy is fulfilled. I only point that out. I only point that out to tell you what we're doing today. Mm. Who's standing before you and why I'm here? Simply, as I say all the time, to set the record straight. These are confirmations for you if you are a doubter. Now I ask your preacher or your rabbi, rabbi or imam to tell me next year what to expect. So, and log it down so I can find it. London is going underwater. It just gave us notice. That's also in our prophecies. London will not be here. You understand? They have a new mosquito carrying a bacteria. That's on the media today. I told y'all to get away from eating beef a long time ago. If you was listening to me, then you have nothing to worry about. Now they're talking about the poisons of fruit. The dangers of fruit. If you're listening to me, and I do, and I do expect you to check out what I say. I don't want no blind faith. You're safe. If you don't listen to me, if you think you got it, then that's not my, then you're no longer my responsibility. Then I'm not your chief. If I'm your chief, then you respect what I suggest to you. I'm not going to tell you to do nothing wrong. I am telling you that we're coming to that day and time where y'all got to inherit some courage. Because you're going to have to stand up and tell them who you are, not ask them. You have to tell them where you come from. Young man asked, he said, what about me? He said, I'm from a Latino birth. How do I identify who I am? I told y'all very simply, they record three races on the planet, right? Name them. Negroid, Mongoloid, and Caucasoid, and in that order. And they give you descriptions of each of those races. Correct? And the first race, and that, has, and that has been proven to exist on the planet, is what they refer to as the Negroid. This is a fact. Scientists are no longer in doubt about who was first. Pigmentation, melanin, everything says you were on the planet first, which means you own the planet. Not, you don't own just America, you also own Europe. If you were here first, that's what, that's what he says in his law. That's why he creates the word indigenous. Indigenous means I was here first. Now, Oriental and, which is called Mongoloids, mixed with us. And all the races that are still Moors and Nuwapians are in between that. You follow that? If you travel through the tribe of the Native Americans, all down to the islands of the Caribbeans, all the Ararats, the, all of these people, Konya, they're all people who came from Ormax and Mongoloid mixture. You with me? Nothing else. There's no such thing as the East Indians or the Mong or you call the Malaysians. They are all under those three weight races genetically. You can check the blood types and trace it. So you are more 
as, as any other law. And, and everybody from Puerto Rico, Cuba, from San Domingo, from Panama, you are all Native Americans and Moors with no question or doubt unless they can produce some new scientific data that the etymologists use other than facts. <laughs> and they will try. They will come up with information, introduce it to you, and it don't even have to be right and half of y'all niggas to believe it. I mean, ain't no such thing as a tribe of Shabazz. Malcolm X died carrying a name that doesn't even exist. Doesn't have a national or national origin or anywhere. Nothing can be proven. A man lost his life under the name Shabazz, something, a fake, a, a fake name. It's not even, it's not even going to be in St. Peter's Book of the Gate. You hear me? We come back around every certain amount of thousands of years of abuse. The divinity inside of you says, I am fed up. I am tired. I need the truth again. And sometimes that truth hurts because you may be the son or the daughter of a pastor. You may be a pastor yourself. You may be a reverend, imam, a Muslim, Christian. And it hurts. But you got to make up your mind. Do you want the truth or not? That's all. That's, that's what it's about. Do you want the truth or not? If you want the truth, you go after it. A-S-K is the key words. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. You can't sit inside of a church and listen to it. You got to ask. The first letter is A, S, K, ask him. So when the reverend starts to preach and say, Reverend, I prefer you to start the teaching. I don't mind the preaching, but do the preaching after you do the teaching. So I know what you're preaching about. But if you get up there and just start preaching and you don't start teaching, I ain't got nothing to go on but faith. I don't want no more faith. I want some facts. I want to go in the closet and find the toys on Christmas Eve. I'm tired of waiting till Christmas morning. They're already in the house. Why not? Facts are already here. Why can't I have them? And why am I such a bad person? Because I don't like what you do to me. Because I walk into a restaurant and I don't get fair service. I walk into a store, you ask me, can I help you? want to escort me around like I'm a thief. And then you want to know whether or not McVeigh is crazy. McVeigh could walk in any restaurant and get treated well. McVeigh, you know what I'm talking about, Timothy. Or Jeffrey Dahmer, which probably didn't frequent restaurants. He had his own personal restaurant. <laughs> but Jeffrey Dahmer could walk into a supermarket or a clothes store downtown Atlanta any morning. and nobody would give him a second look. But you can put on a three-piece mohair suit, silk suit, and walk in. They'll still walk over to you. Can I help you? Yeah, you can get the hell out of my face. And when you do that there, you're an arrogant nigger. They don't seem to be sensitive enough to realize what they're creating out of us. They don't realize what they're making. A new person is being born. I'm tired of it. In simple, plain vulgarity. I'm tired of it. If you can't prove it, don't tell me it. And brother, 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 reverend, shut up. Shut up until you go into this book by cup on the beginning of the cover. Don't be walking up and giving me no New Testament. God don't have to renew nothing. Doesn't God know from the Old Testament what he wants to say? Why must he say, now there's a new one? God don't need to renew. God sends renewers enter earth people who come down to communicate his message if you are a god believing person or a god fearing person as they put it you hear me but the crap they got to take it back